you that right now. Hey folks, I am Priya Rao with the First Weekend Club. We are talking about giraffes today because we have two very special guests. So if you are joining us, get your questions ready for these two ladies. Director Allison Reed, welcome. Thank you. And a very special guest, the first giraffologist, and I am not making up that word, I tell you, Dr. Ann Dag, welcome. It's so great to have you both here. I'm super excited about this film. It's The Woman Who Loves Giraffes. And folks, if you got questions, just pop them in. Give us a shout out to let us know you're here. Even after the fact, we can get your questions answered. So if you're not live, that's okay. We can get your questions. Mom's calling. Mom, join us on Facebook Live. <laughs> Maybe that's why she's calling. Mom, guess what? You're on Facebook Live. That's right. You're here. First of all, let's tell people where they can watch the movie before we get started. Uh, when and where? Well, this Friday, November the 16th, it opens, and it's going to be in Toronto. It's going to be at the Ted Rogers Hot Dog Cinema on Bloor Street. Street. Mm -hmm. Yes, and in other cities as well. Yeah, so all the information can be found on our website, firstweekingclub.ca. Check it out there. But let's start talking about giraffes and about uh, this lovely lady beside me. What was it about giraffes, and how did you fall in love with them? I fell in love with them when I was three. <laughs> My mother, she came from Chicago, and she took me to Chicago to visit her parents. Mm -hmm. And we went to the zoo, and I saw this beautiful animal. I thought, oh, this is so wonderful. And when I got home, I said to my parents, um, you know, can you give me a book about giraffe? Because I'd love to have one. And they said, well, there is no such book. So then I thought, well, I'll write it, but it'll take me a while, which, <laughs> which it did. And uh, yeah, that's how it began. The rest is history. No. The rest <laughs> is history because, it, is it fair to say giraffes have been the love of your life? Yes. Yes, at the age of three, she saw something she wanted, she went for it, and she literally did write the book on giraffes. So that itself is just astounding to me. You put it out there, you know, you can make it happen with enough love and will. She also thinks giraffes give the best kisses ever. We were in Nairobi. Do you remember that, Anne? Yes, we so were good. in Nairobi, and giraffes have a tongue that's about, I don't know, this long. Right. And Anne had a pellet of food in her mouth, and the giraffe, like, brought its brought its tongue out and gave her a big kiss. They're very specific. Yes. They know how to get to those hard-to-reach leaves. Yes, that's right? exactly right. I learned that that's why they have the long tongues, because in this movie you will see some really adorable sequences of uh, Dr. Dag and some other giraffologists going into schools in, in Africa and trying to teach the community about the importance of conservation and about the importance of giraffes. Because one statistic I was really mortified to hear about was the, the decline in the population oh, yeah. of almost, was it 50% in just... Well, maybe 30, 35%, maybe there. It's hard to say for sure. But. There are different subspecies. So some right. subspecies, like reticulated giraffes, uh, have declined 80% in the last 20 years. So that's plummeting towards extinction. Yes. But there are other subspecies who are, I think giraffes as a, as a whole have declined 30% in the last chunk of time. You're right. Yeah, it's time we do something about it. And why haven't giraffes got the love that they deserve? Why do you think that they've been sort of overshadowed? Because they're as fascinating, if not more so, with that long, elegant neck that we all strive for, you know, to give length <laughs> to our necks. Uh, why have they been so behind the curve, so to speak? Everybody gives attention to the elephant and to other... Well, other I don't know when you think about it, there are maybe a hundred different kinds of animals, kudus, and, and um, I guess they deserve equal value, but... Fair point. We think... Equal opportunity. Right. Is yes, right. But it's funny, isn't it, how both giraffes and Anne, I mean, everyone loves giraffes. Yes. Clearly, everyone loves Anne, but they've both sort of been flying under the radar for some reason. Yeah. But, but And it seems like now people are starting to become aware of the, the plight of giraffes and aware of, uh, you know, the work that Anne did. Well, and, and we, this is such a great time in terms of the zeitgeist, I suppose, with the whole Me Too movement and just the re-emergence of issues of uh, feminism and uh, equality and racism and other things that are happening in the world, you actually really had to deal with sexism, like big time. So can you just talk about how difficult it was for you to even get started, to, to make your way to Africa and be able to work hands-on with these yeah, amazing well, animals? Very, very true. It was, um, by the time I got a degree, I was 23 and I set off for Africa, but 
everyone thought I was mad. <laughs> and I was very, I had to um, maybe write to maybe 20 people or organizations that I thought might be able to um, have me work with them and they all wouldn't and said, right. you know, we can't organize that. So then, so yes, then she, she got smart. Well, <laughs> she got smarter. She's not clearly very smart, but she got sneaky. <laughs> so, 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 there is that underlying characteristic to Anne. She looks sweet, but underneath. I know that and that is something that is actually quite a, I, I loved in the movie through the use of letters and, and all that we might get into shortly, but your spirit, your wild spirit in in an era when that was probably not really encouraged is really admirable. <laughs> well, so what you. did you do that was sneaky to make your way onto the, onto the... Uh, well, I wrote a lot of, I think I wrote about maybe 15 letters right. and signed it and in a at the time. Yeah. And then it occurred to me, somebody wrote back and said, well, we don't have any place we could put a woman. And then I thought, well, that's why, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So then I decided to pretend that I might be a man and then I <laughs> left off. It's like Yentl, but not. <laughs> So you just signed your name A Innes. Yes. And then people automatically assumed you were male. Yeah, and then yeah. someone said, oh yeah, that would be fine. I could bunk him with the camp man. Right. And I remember my mother said, hey, wait a minute. You can't bunk him with a, a lot of men. But anyway, I wrote to the man again and explained that I was a woman. And he said, oh, we'll, we'll uh, this do something is, for This you. is after she's already gone on a boat. Yes. Gone to England and is landed in awesome. South Africa. So it, she told him sort of when it was too late. <laughs> right. Although well, there was some resistance even after she did yes. tell him, but she wore him down. Yes. And we, <laughs> we became best friends. It, it was, he, it, he was just a super guy. Yeah. So once you got to Africa and you saw these amazing animals in the wild for the first time, what did that feel like? Oh, it felt like heaven. It was just unbelievable. Everywhere I looked while I was looking, everywhere. There were giraffes and uh, probably maybe a hundred in, in this huge area yeah. among cattle. Wow. Allison, the film is really interesting in the way that it's, first of all, we promoted Allison's first directing, yes. uh, first feature film, The Baby Formula, way back in 2000. Never mind, never mind. It was a, a, a little while ago. A little while ago. <laughs> She has been extremely busy doing a lot of stunts. You don't want to mess with this woman. She has been in, in stunt work for about 30, 35 years, you said? Oh, God. Yes. Sorry, I did. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm going to not say numbers anymore. But yes. now she's full time directing TV, but this is only your second feature film. Yes. And uh, may and my I say. first documentary. Right. Quite a departure from the baby formula. Yes. How did this happen? Well, it was funny because the baby formula, now that I think about it, had had uh, documentary qualities, remember? Because it had the, the real pregnancies of uh, Angela Vance and Megan Falkenbach right. in it. So there was sort of some crossover there now that okay. I think about it. Interesting. Yeah. So you were projecting that I was going to, I am going to do a documentary someday, so I might as well bring those elements into this. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah but actually um, my interest in Anne um, started out being a, I, I, my first thought about this film was that it would be a scripted film. When I read her book and became fascinated with her story, um, I started thinking about you know a film like *Gorillas in the Mist* or right. *Africa*. This could be the you know the Andag scripted film. But how did you even hear about the the book? Like because it, you're right that Dr. Dag and her work has been really kind of overshadowed by yes. those that came after her. Yes. Jane Goodall and uh, Diane Fossey, all known for their work in Africa, but you were really the first, and also Canadian. Can I, I just say a woot woot to that? <laughs> so how did you discover her work? Well, there, there was a, a radio documentary on CBC Radio okay. about Anne, so that's how I first uh, discovered her story. And then, of course, I read Pursuing Giraffe, her book that described that whole adventure. And yeah, and I was, I was, I was hooked. I was hooked and then I was starting to develop that project when I found out Anne was going back to Africa for the first time in over half a century. Wow, which must have been... That yeah. makes me look rather old. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we're, all, we're all getting older, there's no denying any of that. Now we have a quick question before I forget to get to it. So Joanne P. Jackson, hi, thanks for writing a question. How do giraffes in the wild compare to elephants in the wild, conservation-wise? There, there are fewer giraffes than elephants. Yes, I'm not yes, sure about elephants, but now, but now we're down to what maybe uh, less than a hundred thousand giraffes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, many less than when I was there. Right. Ah, so 
we're going to get to questions like, is there anything we can do? But um, I wanted to ask, uh, oh, I've lost my train of thought. It'll come back. But I have questions here because I watched the movie yesterday and there were so many moments that I was like, oh, what about this? What about this? When, okay, so the conference, there was a, a recently a conference that you were lucky enough to be doing this film in time to get that footage. Did you know about the conference before you started this? No, it was it was crazy. So I've been filming Anne for- Timing is everything. Yes, for, for five years it's, it's <sighs> taken. So that first trip back to Africa was um, five years ago. Mm -hmm. And you know I just sort of jumped on and did it without really knowing what the story was gonna be. I just knew it was gonna be fantastic because it was Anne. But, and the story sort of revealed itself to us um, mm -hmm. over, over the five, course of five years. And yeah, it was a crazy coincidence that and got to go to a conference in Chicago at the Brookfield Zoo, which was the exact place her mother took her all those years ago when she was three years old. So it went back to the, the, the yeah, place she fell in love really with. It's really full circle, and yeah. it's a bit what is going on out there, but there really is something about it being so full circle and things happening for a reason, and just the timing of it is yeah. Kind yeah. of nuts, right? It is. So my question had been, as we were talking about the decline in the populations, with elephants and with some of the other uh, animals out there in Africa, a lot of the decline is due to poaching for whatever crazy reasons people think the elephant tusks, uh, elephant tusks and other things have special, you know, purposes, medicinal or sexual elevation. But it's not that for the giraffes. A lot of the... There's not a lot of poaching, but it's more for uh, just for food. For food, because they're hungry people out there. Yeah. And so that makes it a an extra level of challenge in terms of conservation. Exactly. How do you deal with the fact of telling people don't you know continue to starve uh, because we need to protect the giraffe population? So how do you deal with that? That's a hard one. That's yeah. Very hard. I think one of the things Anne feels strongly about. Um, is that the the well-being of giraffes and other animals is inextricably linked to the well-being of the of the local people. Right. So um, the work that she's doing and that other giraffe scientists who she she works with are doing uh, incorporate the 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 local people into the into the giraffe conservation discussion and activities. Right. But you're right. I mean, and habitat plays into that as well, right? Yeah. Um, you know, when there's not enough habitat left to support these giraffes, they eat, like, how many hours a day do giraffes well, eat? They, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, most, they spend most of their time eating, so they need they need a lot of land, and that's mm -hmm. just being encroached upon. So it's, it's a really complicated situation. Yeah, sometimes humans just suck in so many ways, yes. and this is just, it's yeah. almost more just like, there's just too many people. But I did hear an interesting t statistic, totally off, not even relating to this at all, but I was listening to a talk show on the radio yesterday, and they were saying that there's so much food wastage, that we waste so much food because we produce too much food. And to me, there was, that was so ironic. So it was somebody from the, uh, not the Daily Bread Food Bank, but a, a, a Second Harvest, I believe it was, was saying that we produce enough food to feed the entire world. And, uh, you know, there's something yeah. wrong with that yeah. statistic. When yeah. we are throwing good food out here because we can, because it's cheap, and people in other parts of the world are threatening the, the balance of the entire ecological system uh, because they don't have enough food. So that's something to think about, I think, just in general. Yeah, that's, that's a very good point. You know, in, in general, as the holidays approach and as we decide to feast here, you know, just remember, just buy what you need. And even when you think you can't use it, try to find ways to use things. Don't throw them out because the other interesting thing I heard was when you do throw out that food, I sometimes think, oh, I'm recycling the broccoli stalks. But the methane that that produces is a pollutant. So you're not actually helping the earth by putting those materials back into the soil. You are, but you're also creating more methane gas. So think about what you buy and how much food you waste. And also, eat less meat. I mean, Anne's a vegetarian. Anne's highly cognizant. Oh, you too? I'm a vegan, and so I was just like, yes, of course, eat. you don't have to be vegan, but you know, Meatless Mondays, try yes. to just eat yes. less meat. I'm trying, I'm trying, yes. I aspire to be as good as you, man. <laughs> um, no, no, seriously, I mean, I think that would have the greatest impact on the planet, right? If yes. people ate, I mean, that's a big problem with regards to climate change and right. all the other 
problems we're discussing right now. Well, People just just eat less. Exactly. Meat. The production of yeah. cattle alone is yeah. the greatest uh, emitter of methane gas. It's the greatest pollutant in in the world. It, you don't think about it, but not only the the um, the meat itself, but the amount of land that those cows need to graze yeah. is land that we could be using to grow crops to feed people. But apparently we don't need to because we're producing enough food to feed the world anyways. Yeah. So just keep those things in mind. Uh, and I also loved this, that when you were, when you were teaching, uh, you, you did not want to kill in the name of research. That to me seems so antithetical to what it means to be a zoologist at all. They often have to kill to see, to understand the biology. How did that work in your, how did, how did that affect your work? Well, I just would never dissect an animal. I don't, it doesn't need to be dissected. People think, oh, well, I'll do it and then I'll write a paper and then I'll, that'll be good for my career. But right. I mean, that's ridiculous. Just think about what you're doing. And, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and just don't, don't do things like that and tell other people not to do things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But most people do think that that's how we, we understand the biology and all of that of an animal. But I love that you see the ways that she developed her methodology in, in writing the book on giraffes, quite literally. It's a really fascinating film. I loved it. It was, it was very sad at times to hear, as we hear every day in the news, about the decline in populations of these gorgeous creatures. Alison, you used a lot of um, interesting, uh, interesting ways of telling the story, a lot of letters were to really tell the love story between you and your late husband, Ian. Just such a lost art, the art of writing letters. A lot of narration. Can you just talk about how you came up with some of these devices? Yeah, so they're not traditional narration. So what I wanted to do was um, interweave the story of Anne's past and her present. And, uh, and luckily, Anne has saved all her correspondence. So she was writing letters yes. to her mother, and her mother was writing her, and she was writing to her fiancé. They're really... Rocky <laughs> letters. Oh, the letters are beautiful and, and some quite daring at, for the time. I would say yes, yes. So um, yeah, they really I think help give insight into what it was like at the time and what Anne was like at the time, mm -hmm. and to be able to juxtapose that with you know what we were seeing today. Like in the 1950s, we have this. We also have the 16 millimeter footage that Anne took um, right. in 1956. So to you know, see her sitting in her little car writing notes on giraffes um, back in '56, and then when we were there in you know 2015, she, the giraffe scientist she's working with there, Francois Deacon, is putting GPS collars on on the giraffes and getting information on them 24/7. You know, it's just changed so dramatically. Right. So the interweaving the, of the past and present was really cool. And there are sad moments in the film, but I think there are a lot of laughs too. I mean, there are. Yeah. It's, it's overall very uplifting and just really fascinating to learn about you and about your work and learn about these amazing creatures. One question I just had are, are you said they're, they make the best kissers. I'm sure Ian might be upset about that, <laughs> you know, watching from above. But are they social? Do they like humans? I don't think they care for one way or another. It isn't. Because you've interacted with them, though, there's some beautiful scenes with you and uh, eating out of your hands. They oh. seem quite friendly, I suppose, is what I'm. I guess asking. the domesticated ones, like right, Anne, okay. Anne was. Uh, I mean, we have a little shot of Anne bottle feeding that baby giraffe, yeah. and that giraffe in particular uh, is a twin giraffe. So there wasn't enough milk um, for for both both right. babies. So that particular baby was hand raised. And imprinted out. And he thinks Tiffany's his mom, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. So, so that giraffe in particular is very interactive with humans. Mm -hmm. But I think you, you say they're curious, is what you say. <laughs> Giraffes are very curious. Yeah, they yeah. But they come up and the, if if you stand around, it will come closer to see what you're what you're up to. Right. Which is what you don't want to do because then you're affecting their behavior. Yeah, yeah. If you're studying them in the wild. That's a whole different ballgame. Yeah. So when yeah. I was in in South Africa, she was very careful not to not to be present like she just mm. stayed in her car and stayed very still and so so that she wouldn't affect their behavior right yeah is true there, scientist true scientist is there anything we can do as the general public lay people who are not studying these animals is there anything we can do to help affect their conservation you could mention that yeah. yes there is <laughs> yay because we want to end on a high note yeah so at our website on our website uh, which is 
the woman who loves giraffes.com there is a take action tab and those there are three organizations that are listed that um, and and vouches for that and thinks is doing yeah, are doing the three best I think that are yeah, yeah. Not all, not all draft conservation organizations are equal. But these are these are the ones that that Anne believes in. Um, we we had a really great moment in a Q and A. We had a, a screening in Calgary, and um, Francois Deacon, the, the mm -hmm. doctor, yes, yes, who was putting the GPS collars on, had the batteries were running out on those collars, so he had to get them off before those those giraffes. Um, before he couldn't find them anymore. Right. So um, he needed money to do that. You need helicopters and vets, and he needed $5,000 more. So I asked in the audience if anyone knew of anyone to wow. please come forward and, and they could go to South Africa and help Francois with that process. Oh my goodness. And that actually happened. Really? Two women came forward, each gave $5,000, and one of them went and helped get those collars off the giraffes. So, um, both Francois Deacon, uh, John Doherty, who's in Kenya with the Samburu uh, National Reserve, he's he's taking kids from the schools into the reserves, warring tribes, and they have a wonderful experience watching giraffes. They've never seen giraffes before, right? Many of them, yeah. which is crazy. Yeah. Too. yeah, yeah. So, so these scientists want people to become involved, not only financially, but have an experience and go there. So if you go to our website, uh, contact us if you want to see the film and it's not in your city, mm -hmm. and we'll make it happen. And remember, you can find out all the information about where and when the film is screening at firstweekenclub.ca. And uh, finally, as you just mentioned, people going there and interacting with the animals, I've often been torn about the idea of safaris because I don't know if it's disrupting their habitat, but at the same time, I want to see these creatures in their natural habitat. Is it good or bad for them and for the environment to be going yeah, as, as long as the people are keep a long distance away, they won't be worried about it. I, I, I think it would be an excellent idea to get more people going. And it brings money in. It brings money into the well. area, doesn't it? Yeah, yes, right. which is a good thing. Well, that makes me happy because that that kills the dilemma for me, <laughs> and I will now go on an African safari. I cannot wait. Thank you so much, ladies. The Thank film you. is screening here in Toronto again tomorrow. Sorry, this Friday night at uh, Ted Rogers Hot Dogs Theater on Bloor. At what time? Uh, what time? There, there are two screenings, aren't there? On Friday, it's uh, three forty-five, and then there's a later screening, six something, and then of course Saturday, there's I think an eight p.m. screening, and you know Sunday. Right. And will you be there for Q and A's, or will people be able to meet the legend? Yes, in person? Anne will be there. Her daughter Mary, who's who's also in the in film, the film yeah. will be there. I'll be directing a show out in Newfoundland, so I'll be coming in by Skype. Right. Yes. Technology. Yes. You see. Yeah. It's amazing. Thank you, ladies. All the best with this film. And so now you guys know where you can go to help out. Visit their website. Once again, it was thewomanwholovesgiraffes.com. And that is this lovely woman here in all her giraffe apparel. Yay. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>